Do you know what to do when disaster strikes? With fire season in full swing, we have plenty of tips to keep your whole family safe. We're gonna tell you all about that and so much more right here on Pets on Parade. Good morning and welcome to Pets on Parade brought to you by 3TV. I'm Kelsey Dickerson with the Arizona Humane Society. Thank you so much for tuning in with us this Saturday. Now we always love to show the transformations of our pets and today we have a few glow ups that show what just a few weeks can do for pets in need. We have two of the ador adorable pups from this litter on today's show and they are absolutely ready for their forever homes. And are you or someone you know passionate about animals? Why not? make a career out of it. We'll tell you all about the different opportunities AHS has to help pets in need in just a bit. And before we show you our first pup in person, we want to show you Paprika's before picture when she was first brought to AHS and clearly not feeling very well. She is tiny, but she is mighty and uh, she's sleepy, Lisa. <laughs> Well, the odds of getting a calm puppy right as the camera goes on is very, very slim. But uh, this is Paprika, and you saw in her photos, uh, they came in, um, owner reached out to our field team saying that they had too many pets in the home and that these puppies were living outside. So you could see how skinny they were, and look at her now. She's adorable, and she has a little fat belly. They gained weight really quick when they got into the shelter, and they had regular access to food and cool water. And uh, the cutest thing about her is her little ears. They fold backwards. She's got like American curl kitty ears. I hope they stay that way because they are darling on her. But one of the ways that you can help the pets in our care, including little ones like Paprika, is um, by don't making a regular donation to the Arizona Humane Society, being a constant companion. So right now, for the first 100 people that sign up to be a constant companion with our regular match program, Brian Albu, who is one of our just really dedicated volunteers, board member, animal lover, cat foster, I just can't say, the guy does everything and now he's doing this. He's gonna match the first 100 people $100 if you sign up to be one of our constant companions. So go to azhumane.org.companion. Absolutely, and it's actually slash companion, but I agree, Brian is absolutely incredible. And you know what, that puppy is either gonna be the most calm dog ever, or she's tricking everybody out there. So thank you so much for that, Lisa, and thank you, Brian, for that incredible match. And today we have a true angel on our hands. Well, another angel besides all of our great volunteers that are here every week, of course. And while we always need fosters and adopters, there are definitely other ways that people can help, right, ladies? Yes, there are lots of ways. This is little Angel. He came in with his siblings as an owner surrender. They had too many pets in the home. Uh, he is not quite big enough to be neutered, so he'll need to go to a foster home for about a week or two to gain weight, and then he'll be ready to go up for adoption. Uh, little kitties like this have to spend time in foster sometimes when they're not ready to go up for adoption, and we could also use help in that area in the way of kitten supplies, uh, as far as our kitten cozies, which are the little felt blankies that uh, we send our kittens to foster with. Uh, we could also use just regular blankets to put in their kennels and to send home with fosters. Uh, any kitten wet food, we could use all types of kitten wet food and uh, any other supplies like that are always greatly appreciated. You can drop those off at our AHS Sunny Slope campus or go on azhumane.org and click on the donate button. To see how else you can help and what other items we need donated. But little Angel here always loves any type of help that he can get. So there he is. Absolutely adorable. Thank you so much for that. And we have to warn you, adorableness is coming your way. A friend of Dr. Hansen's adopted sweet Mordu, now named Tony, after they unfortunately had to say goodbye to their adult cat, which left their son Mason heartbroken. Well, it is safe to say that Tony has made himself right at home with his new family and that they are this, that this special little kitten met his special little friend as they are now best of friends. This sweet baby is an example of one of just thousands of kittens aged 
NHS gives a second chance at a great life too, thanks to your support from volunteering, fostering, donating, and more. Make sure to visit azhumane.org for more information on, you can, on how you can help. Yay, Tony. And of course, we always love when Carrie can join us in studio every season to, or every, every week to be able to highlight an adorable baby that needs some temporary respite from the shelter. But today she's joining us from our Sunny Slope campus to highlight a lot of pets that need your help. Let's take a look. Hi, and welcome to our Bottle Baby ICU. I'm Carrie Hughes, and I'm here to talk about a few of the pets that need foster right now. You can step up to help and open your heart and your home to some of these little ones in need. So in our Bottle Baby ICU right now, we have over 50 tiny kittens that are waiting for foster placement. These kittens range from about four weeks old, like Johnny Boy here, to the teeniest of residents that Ara has and is feeding. Now the kittens from our Bottle Baby ICU are going to need constant care. You're going to need to feed them every two to four hours throughout the day and throughout the evening and night. So make sure that you're prepared to step up to the challenge. But hey, who can refuse the sweet little cuddles of our tiniest residents here at AHS? Let's go to our kitten nursery and we'll see a little bit older kittens that you might be able to help today. Hi, we're now in our kitten nursery and this is the area where our kittens graduate to. These kittens are four to eight weeks old and typically just need a little bit of time in your home to gain some weight before they're altered. Now our bottle baby ICU kittens are definitely our greatest need, but these little ones also need you today. How can you resist these beautiful blue eyes? Here we are with one of our doggy friends in need. This is Violet and she's only seven months old and she has Demodex Mange. As you can tell, she's so excited to have you call today and take her home. She just will need regular dog care with some shampoo baths and medication. But she can run around in your yard, hop on your couch, and get all the love and snuggles that you have today. We have so many dogs right now that need your support from big to small. So please reach out azhumane.org slash foster. Give us a call or email today. We're here to serve you and find the perfect pet for your family. <laughs> Just absolutely amazing and like Carrie mentioned there are always ways to be able to help us through fostering right now we have 700 pets in foster 700 in our shelter so that is doubling the space of and the amount of animals that we're able to help each and every day with dozens more who are in need of a of a temporary home so you can visit azhumane.org slash foster to be able to sign up and take the online orientation and of course we absolutely love our critter friends and we have a true love bug in studio who just just so happens to be named after a love bug. For anyone who remembers this car, they'll know this bun's name. Perry, please do us the honors. Oh, I remember Herbie the love bug. <laughs> what a great Disney movie that was. This little guy right here came to us as a uh, over-the-counter stray. That always blows me away when we see stray rabbits. I've never seen a guy like this in my neighborhood walking around, but that's what happened to him. He came in, he was a little dirty, as you can imagine a stray rabbit's going to be. He was examined in our Second Chance Animal Trauma Hospital turned out to be okay, but we had to send it to a foster for the RHDV2 virus that we've been talking about for actually weeks now. He doesn't have it. It was just a quarantine, just a, a, pre, a preemptive measure to get him, make sure that he was safe. He was in that foster home and uh, his little profile right now says he allows all handling. And that's just a great thing that the foster family did. And how they do that, they probably did that by lots and lots of socialization by handling this guy. You know, a lot of people just don't know how to handle critters. Um, I know with puppies and kittens, people like to do this sort of a thing, hold them with two hands like babies. You don't do that with a rabbit. They do not like heights like that. When I get a rabbit, I generally secure them very, very well and get on the ground almost immediately. So this guy has had that great socialization. We have lots of tips for people if you don't know anything about critters because they are different than cats and dogs. Go to our website, azumaine.org slash behavior and read all about it. This guy looks like a Volkswagen, right, Kelsey? Look at him. He's got that dome. <laughs> he is definitely, uh, yeah, he's aerodynamic, <laughs> I think, but we don't put him in the air. Thank you for those important tips. And don't worry, we don't have a pig in the studio. We got donated a new toy by someone at 3TV, and Summer is absolutely loving it. We'll introduce you to her later. Plus, 
If you're looking for a new job, AHS has got you covered. That's coming up after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Pets on Prey. Now, like we mentioned earlier in the show, there are so many ways that you can help the pets at the Arizona Humane Society. And one is by having a career right here at the shelter. And joining me today to be able to talk all about not just the careers that we have available, but also what inspired her to work with AHS is Jennifer Armbruster, AHS's Senior Manager of Public Relations, Communications, and Marketing. It's <laughs> fall. There you go. <laughs> Jen, thank you so much for joining Thanks us Thanks for today. having me. Now, I know that for everyone at the organization, we are so excited to have you join the team. Probably no one more excited than I am <laughs> as we are going to be a dynamic duo. Yes. What inspired you to look for a job at the Arizona Humane Society? Yeah. Well, like so many of my co-workers at the Arizona Humane Society, uh, finding a job where I can work with animals has been a dream come true. I've been an animal lover since I was young, and I've now had the opportunity to work for two organizations, um, first in the veterinary medical field, and now here at the Arizona Humane Society. So um, an organization with such a great mission and purpose that we have here at the Arizona Humane Society. And I mean, look at this little guy right here that I get to hold and cuddle on. There's not too many other employers <laughs> in Arizona that you get those little tail wags and kisses at lunchtime. So it's really a take your pet to work day every day with us, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. And everywhere that we go, everyone is always so happy to see these little guys. And we're definitely happy to provide that experience as well. Now, you talked about having a job in the veterinary yeah. career field um, early, like once you mentioned your, your, um, your experience. Mm -hmm. Now, when people think about working at a shelter or working with animals, that's usually what they think about. But there is such a wide array of jobs that we have. Yes. Yeah, so I think there it is that initial thought of a medical field. And we definitely have that need for veterinary and very veterinary medicine veterinarians and our veterinary technicians especially at our clinics and our second chance animal trauma hospital but we also have a need for a skill set in operations and administrative and uh, that takes a lot of people to keep our shelter running um, so every department from IT to development to uh, accounting we have a great team that also has all our summer camps that are going on instilling compassion in the next generation. Um, we also have an adoptions team that helps with uh, making sure these little guys find friends um, <laughs> to take care of them in their forever homes. Um, and we also have um, a really great team through a rescue outreach, people who transport our animals back and forth. So um, lots of skill sets, always looking for great people um, to take care of these guys and keep our shelter running. Absolutely. And like you mentioned, we always have so many opportunities. We are actually hiring right now. We usually are hiring year round. Can you tell us about some of our current opportunities? Yes. Yeah, so we have about 17 open opportunities right now. Some of those are from the medical field, but others are from um, some of our operationals and administrative teams. We have a development assistant. There's an events and um, partnership specialist and also a, a pet resource specialist in our call center. They we take over 100,000 calls from area residents every year to help make sure that pets and people stay in home. So we need the best of the best to come and join with us. Absolutely. Now, for anyone out there who's thinking, hey, I want to work with animals or I want to see what's open and available, where do they need to go? Yep. Come to our website, azhumane.org slash careers. And uh, we can't meet, wait to meet you. And these guys can't wait to meet you either. So Absolutely. <laughs> well, Jen, thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. And thank you for all that you do. We're so excited to yes. see everything that happens and to be able to work together. Looking really forward to it. it. Yes. Thanks. And like Jen mentioned, make sure to visit azhumane.org slash careers. And make sure to stay tuned right here because we're going to introduce Introduce you to more adorable pets like this one when we come back. Welcome back to Pets on Parade. Now, not everyone is a fan of the heat during this time of year, but I guarantee you that you are going to love this pup, this pup as much as she loves her little piggy toy, right, Janine? This is summer. She has a lot of energy, but she's only seven months old. And she was confiscated out in the field and brought to an emergency animal clinic where we picked her up and took her back to our shelter and checked her all out. And of course, she's happy and healthy. And she's a boxer pity mix, and she's just adorable. But I've just been training her just this few minutes with just treats. And she was very attentive and listening. I mean, 
Okay, Summer, look, look. Sit, look, come here, sit. Yes, good girl. Well, I didn't, it wasn't quite a sit, but close enough. Oh, well. But um, so we're talking about, you know, the wildfires and all having, um, you should really have a plan set in place. That's the three P's, plan, prepare, and practice. So basically you plan what you're going to do with your family and including your pets. And you prepare an emergency kit, which will be things that can sustain um, their, your pet's care for a, at least a week, maybe two, in case there's, you know, you're displaced out of your home. And then also practice, because when you're under a stressful situation, your adrenaline's running high, you need to have like muscle memory and really know what you're doing in, so you don't have to think it out. You've already experienced it in your mind and ahead of time, and then you're going to be much better off. But a family that likes action and fun, this girl is <laughs> gonna be so much fun for you. And we have training techniques, you know, through our behavioral team that you can sign up for some classes. That would be perfect for her. And also, if you want to check about check out more about the um, the emergency situation, go on azhumane.org slash disaster to learn more about how you can help out your family and your pets. Absolutely. You never think it's going to happen to you until it does. So thank you for that, Janine. And now we won't blame anyone if they want to take a little peep at this cutie. And it makes sense with her name, right, Denise? Yes, this is Peep. <laughs> and she is nine weeks old, and she is a Dilute Calico. Dilute Calicos, just like regular Calicos, are always female. So Janine talked a little bit about preparing for a disaster. So of course we want to include our pets in those plans as well. And we can do that by preparing a go bag for our pets. So that would be a bag that we would take if we or our pets have to evacuate. And in that bag, we want to include things such as their food and feeding instructions, bottled water, any medications, contact information for your veterinarian, and a current picture of you and your pet. It's also important that you keep your microchip information updated and have secondary contact information of maybe a trusted friend or family member who lives outside of the evacuation zone, so perhaps out of state. So it's also important that we train our pets in what to do during a disaster. So we can do that by getting our cats used to being in a carrier. So that should be pretty easy with nine week old Peep here. You can take her in a carrier once a week for a car ride, kind of like we would do for a dog. And that would get her used to being in the car and being in the carrier. So if heaven forbid you and Peep had to evacuate, it would be a little bit less stressful. So Peep is looking for a very active family. She's nine weeks old and she loves all sorts of toys and she is very cuddly. Oh, so adorable. Thank you so much for those life-saving tips, Denise. We appreciate it. And we also had a doggone delightful time celebrating Honeydew's third birthday at our South Mountain campus. Honeydew arrived at AHS in 2022 with a myriad of health concerns that would require a very special adopter. That adopter ended up being AHS's own volunteer engagement event coordinator, Ellie, who has completely transformed this pup's life. She's carted her around in a special wagon, introduced her to countless youth program students, and she still brings Honeydew to work to visit her rescuers. We can't even begin to explain the difference Ellie has made for Honeydew, and in, the pro and in the process, she's inspired so many others to be better pet parents. This alum was the top dog of the day, and she was showered with a lot of love, affection, and of course, treats. She looked absolutely fetching in her birthday dress, making her the belle of the ball for two and four-legged friends alike. She even invited adoptable long-timer pups Sedona, Austin, and Dustin to the potty. Happy birthday, Honeydew. And now this next kitty may not be available quite yet, but that doesn't mean that viewers can't help her out in the meantime while having fun with their kiddos. Right, Stacy? That's right. This is little baby Carmel. And uh, she also is not big enough to be uh, spayed yet, so she will need to go into a foster home for a couple of weeks. But you just saw a dog birthday party. Well, did you know that your kids can also celebrate too? AHS does offer birthday parties for kids. Uh, you get invitations, decorations, and a shirt for the birthday kid, as well as visits from animal teachers. And it's just a really good time. I wish I could have one. It sounds good. So uh, that is definitely something that we offer. And for more information on that, 
that, you can go to azhumane.org slash birthday and find more information. But this is little Carmel who's looking for a foster home right now, but then she'll be ready to go up for adoption and she's ready for action as you can see. Absolutely, she's ready to party. Hi Thank there. you so much for that, Stacy. And don't you worry, we have plenty of pet cuteness. We'll introduce you to this spicy puppy when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Now we saw this sweet baby sister at the beginning, so it only makes sense to round it out with more puppy cuteness. And for anyone who likes spices, but maybe doesn't like a spicy puppy, maybe this is the one for them. What do you guys think? I think you're right, Kelsey. Uh, <laughs> you know the story, because we, like you said, we had paprika up here, just little, this is chili. Uh, owner surrendered, they were living in the backyard. The owner just said they weren't able to take care of them, so they came into our care. They did have some hair loss initially, which is to be expected for a puppy. Well, maybe some living in some conditions where the food isn't the greatest and all. We actually did some skin scrapes on them. They came back negative for any serious skin problems. So it's just a, a nutritional thing. And boy, they are eating now. Look how pu cute this little thing is. They're, they're chubby. They're, they got the little puppy bloat thing going on. They're adorable, so you don't have to worry about that any longer. You know, when you bring a puppy into your home, though, you're going to be facing in the future vet costs, and nobody wants to do that. So you can do your own preventative care, and I think AHS can help a lot in that area, right, Janine? Yes, we have our mobile clinics, and they go around town in different areas and have different um, services available for the community that you may not have options to at a regular vet veterinarian clinic. And so if you go on azhumane.org slash events, you can see our uh, schedule, but you do have to make reservations for those clinics, but they're wonderful. Absolutely, it's definitely a way for us to be able to help even more pets and people in the Valley. Thank you guys so much for that. And thank you, <laughs> oh, Chili. And can you help us name this kitten? Kristen, AHS's senior philanthropy officer, needs your creative input to find the perfect name for her foster kitty. This little cutie came to AHS as a six stray from Peoria. Thankfully, he is feeling better, but now it's time to give him a name that matches his charm. Let's see your suggestions. You can visit our social channels to see what, to let us know what you think this cutie's name should be. And our last pet of the show certainly is a little sweet, but I think a little bit more uh, active than her siblings. <laughs> what do you think, Lisa? Yes, this is Dove, nine-week-old <laughs> female, and she is keeping herself entertained here, back and forth with this ball, and I think she could do this for hours. Um, she's another one that too many pets in the home, luckily they kept them until they were big enough to be spayed and neutered. Um, so if you love animals like obviously all of us on this show do and Jen talked about, we have an uh, event that if you want to come down to volunteer, you get to meet kittens, puppies, you get to help us fill treats and make some toys and of course you can walk through the shelter. And um, it's a great event. You can bring as many people as you want. No age limit as long as you have your parents there. Kids with their parents can come. And they do a group volunteering event. So azhumane.org slash events will tell you more about that. And it's a great way to kind of get your foot in the door to learn all about the type of opportunities there are and to see if it's something that you would love to do like we all do. Absolutely. And from your perspective, what is the best part of volunteering? Best part about volunteering is right here, watching these guys walk out the door with a the family. They come in in some pretty bad shape, and then it's wonderful when you see them walk out with an adoptive family. The volunteer event will be at our South Mountain campus, and there'll be adoptions going on, so you'll be able to experience the joy of families finding their own new family member. Absolutely. It's great to be able to have volunteers do one time, but we guarantee you're going to want to come back. So thank you so much for that. And before we end today's show, I want to give a quick happy birthday. Today is my little sister who is pictured here with her pet, Reese, who is an alum from the Arizona Humane Society, actually adopted from Compassion with Fashion when my Grammy was still around and attending. I love you, little one. I hope you have a great day. And thank you so much for being such a great pet mama to Reese there. And that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Now, like we mentioned, there are so many different ways for you to be able to not only help our pets in the shelter, but your pets at home. So let's keep everyone safe, and we'll see you right here next week for Pets on Parade.